Hello, welcome to the latest devlog for my indie game, Couch Combat. Couch Combat is a split-screen multiplayer first-person shooter, and I am developing it using the Unity Game Engine. Since the last devlog, I've got quite a bit done, mostly to do with a new pause menu and options, but I also laid the foundations for a brand new feature, Explosions. I started off with some basic bug fixes and polish. I was mostly focused on making the animations that I created last devlog work and in removing any issues that still remained. I made the pistols pickup and reload animations look less scuffed, then I moved on to fix this monstrosity. I got it much cleaner looking, but it did still look a bit off. I did nothing to the shotgun, because the shotgun is already cleaner than my good Christian Discord server, which you should join by the way. Now the AK-47 had an okay reload animation but I decided to move the pullback thing on the gun over to the left side so I could replace this terrible pickup animation with something less awful and make the shooting animation more interesting. After polishing up the guns, it was time to pause and take a break. Making a pause menu was next on my hit list, so I started to work on it. The next thing I did was get some inspiration. Yes, I am so unoriginal that I can't even design a pause menu without ripping off something. I eventually settled on this really simple 3 random box design. I set up the canvas for it and then set to work coding up everything to work. Er, the pausing itself is pretty simple. I can just pause the game by setting time scale to zero, which messed with physics at first but I got it working later. Then I got the buttons to call a function when they are pressed on the pause menu which can trigger different things. Getting the buttons to actually work took a while, but I realized I'd removed the event manager object a long time ago from the game, which stopped the pause menu from working. Finally, I got all the buttons to work in the menu except for the settings button. It took a while, but I eventually have it set up so I can hopefully add more buttons or remove them very easily. I also paused input whenever you enter settings and worked out a few more specific case issues for input. Finally, I made all sounds pause whenever the pause menu was up. The main reason I added a pause menu in the first place was to add settings to the game. So I began to code up a settings menu. I decided to split up all settings into two types. Settings for the options are just yes or no, these are stored in a bool array. And also settings where there are a range of options which are stored in a float array. The float array can also probably store multiple choice settings, but I don't have any yet. I decided to make a first setting to set up and test out the settings menu. And I decided on just making a mute setting because that sounds simple and it might be useful so I might as well make it. I created a UI toggle and a function that is called whenever the toggle is changed, as well as a function that updates the settings to number one changes, and I had a functioning mute. And that's why I don't trust pigeons. The main setting I had in mind for this was the sensitivity slider for each player, so it can just actually be adjustable by people who aren't me. I had a basic design for bull settings, so I just copied it over to flow settings and redid a few things. Then I set up the sensitivity settings. It took 8 total sliders so people can adjust their X and Y sensitivity separately, because I'm just that nice. I chose some default values that I thought were pretty good, but I have noticed that the controllers are still quite difficult to aim with. Turning the sensitivity down to 1 makes it a lot more precise, but it also makes the rest of the game near impossible to control. A few ideas I have to fix this issue are maybe just adding some more aim assist, which is easier said than done because I have to code it, but also possibly adding some form of ADSing into the game. I'm not sure about that yet, but I would make sure to try to keep it from being too restrictive and slowing the game down too much if I did implement it. Bug reports were also beginning to pile up, and since I was planning on releasing a new update to the game on H.io, free download in the description by the way, it was time to make like the average Australian whenever they can't afford any more kangaroo meat because they spent all their money on dingo fights. And go bug hunting. For some reason there was a bug where players 3 and 4 could pick up an infinite amount of guns, but only the first would shoot. So I finally removed that innovative feature. I then straight up deleted stage 3 because it's disgusting and made it so players can no longer collide with ragdolls and get stuck in them. 
So I had settings, but they didn't actually save in between games or individual levels. That's pretty annoying, so I decided to try out a Unity feature called Player Preferences, which is a simple way to save settings and stuff. Getting it set up was easy, but actually getting it to work took a few days of just straight up bug fixing. But I then realized that the issue was that I wasn't actually saving much of the values in the code. So after fixing that, it was pretty easy to get it to work. I only realized after publishing this new build that the settings don't actually save after closing the game. I have no idea why, but I guess I'll have to look into this later. Around this time, Unity was having a Black Friday sale, so I decided to pick up a new asset to finally fix input. I bought a nice input manager called In Control for Cheap thanks to the big discount and got to implementing it. Getting the players to drop in at the beginning of the game was hard, but implementing it into the actual game was pretty easy. I added some new quality of life features to the game, like I allowed the first player to choose to play either his keyboard or controller. I also finally made it so you can shoot with the triggers, which is so incredibly nice. My journey to input has been a surprisingly long one, but I hope that I have finally concluded the Sega with this asset. After fixing input, I decided it was past time to release a new build on H.io. So I fixed a few bugs and added a screen at the beginning of the game for the first player. It's quite ugly, but so is most of the main menu, and I plan on redoing that eventually, but I have more pressing matters, so I'll probably do it in the future. The new build is now live and is so much better than the old one. If you want the new version, you have to download it again off of itch.io. So the build was out and it was time to relax. Nah, it's grenade time. So I whipped up a model in Blender. Excellent. Then I got to work making a particle effect worthy of the title of Explosion. It took forever. I couldn't find any good tutorials, so I had to go in and actually figure it out myself through. But after accidentally discovering the account of the creator of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator through a very old post of an explosion he made in the Unity subreddit, as well as hours of trial and error, I had a pretty satisfying and pretty explosion. But unfortunately, I also had a deadline for the next devlog that was getting pretty close, so I decided to wrap up development for the devlog here. I still missed my deadline for the video, by the way. Though a pause menu and settings aren't the most interesting things to be working on, I got them done, and so we'll hopefully be able to get a few more cool features done in the next devlog. I'm planning on finishing up throwables, finally getting melee combat in, and making some new stages. But that might not all happen next devlog, but I hope to get some of it done. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you want to. Bye.